What is up, gang? It is I, Carlton Flowers, your crypto pro. Yay! And today, we need to get into the crazy action of Bitcoin so we can make a determination of how deep this correction will go before the resumption of the bull market. So that's what the goal is. We're going to break these charts down make sense of it. But of course, you must realize that this absolutely is not financial advice. I'm just giving you an opinion and helping you along the way so we can make a determination of a possible investment opportunity. But that does not mean that I know what's going to happen. I repeat, that does not mean I can accurately predict what will happen. So if you are a whiny baby and you want to jump in head first and come back and complain and say that I got it wrong, it's on you. All right. With that, we can jump into the four hour chart and we see that on the four hour chart, we're creeping back up uh, currently at 64,843. We did bounce off of the 50 EMA line, which is very interesting. Or I'm sorry, the 200. There is the 200 exponential moving average line. Notice how we magically touched on that line right here at this big fat volume node. That happens to be centered at 62K, which is the same node we talked about during the last Bitcoin video. It's nice when it works out the way we predict when we're looking at these volume nodes. It worked out exactly like we thought it would. So now we're moving upwards. Uh, the point of control price or the average weighted price where the most buying and selling volume has going on right now happens to be at 67000 We're headed back towards that, but... We're probably going to catch the 50 EMA and get snatched back down before we hit that price. So let's just zoom in a little bit and make sense of what I just said. Look at the 50 EMA. Do you see it? It's right there, that orange line. Do you see how we touched it and got rejected? Now we're moving back up towards it. And the 50 EMA happens to be settling in right at the point of control price of the largest VPVR node. Now, if we move on from here and look at the stochastic, we know that we're headed back up to this point of control price because we have an impending crossover of the fast line and the slow line. When the blue line crosses over the orange, momentum is traveling upwards. So we see this little crossover, right? There is your crossover. That means that the stochastic is going to move up for a little bit. Who knows how far? But for the moment, we'll get a surge up. We might move up towards this POC where we could get rejected again. Notice how the MACD is below the zero line, but we're crawling back up to the zero line. This is a lagging indicator to the stochastic. It will confirm this recovery on the stochastic, and then we'll wait and see what happens from there. Where we go from here, we must move on to the one-day chart. Let's look at the one-day chart and see what it tells us. Well, this is pretty interesting. It's falling off of a cliff. So when we scrunch in this data here, we see that the stochastic rose up on the one day and it stayed up here in the overbought zone for a long time. It tried to dip down here while price kept sidebanding, which was an in indication of a breakout. And then it continued to peak and cross over up here until finally exiting the overbought zone when it crossed the 80 line right there. Now we're close to the 50 line. So this confirms that we're going to have some downward action. We'll have a little trading channel where price bounces around. 
within the limits of these two red lines. It's going to go up and down and up and down like that for a while until we arrive at a settling point. Now, what's the settling point? Well, first of all, if this stochastic can come all the way down and do a full cycle, there are a few places that we can see on the chart that we could end up. One, we've talked about this, 62K. We saw it on the last chart. That's the volume node sticking out the most right there. Two, there is another couple of nodes. Here's one sitting right here at 56, 57K sticking out like a sore thumb. If we fail the big one, we go to the next one, 56K, 57K. If we happen to fail that one, then we go down to this bottom one that is sticking out like a sore thumb at 52K. Let's put an arrow there. There's 52K. Now see, all of this happens in order of decreasing probability. It is most highly probable that we fall to this one at 62 or 60 whatever. Uh, let's see. At 62, 63K. Of next probability, but lower is falling to this 56. Of next lower probability is falling to 52. And we do have a rock bottom target, which is the point of control price. It's at 43K. It's this big volume node right here at the bottom. Lots of popular buying and selling going on. And there's one thing I want to tell you about the buying and selling that goes on within this large volume node. It is the fact that a lot of the ETF buyers started aping in around this volume node. Why is that significant? Well, according to CTO Larson's video earlier today, if the big investment firms want to have a shakeout and make tons of profit, if they drive price down to this range where all of the ETF people jumped in head first and scare them up, the rock bottom price where they started to buy in heavy was 44K. If they drive it below 44K, that is where these folks are absolutely at a loss and can be shaken out of the system where the institutions can take profits. Now, of course, that's a worst case scenario. I'm looking for this node right here as my prediction. I think we're going to hit this 52K, and I could be wrong. That's just where I have to guess, boys and girls. You got to guess somewhere and make a trading decision to make money going against the crowd. If I guess 52 and it bounces off of 62, I lose. But I have to guess somewhere. So I'm going to guess and play the cards at 52 because if it continues to go lower than that, I'm not losing a whole lot. I could be okay with buying some alts while Bitcoin's at 52 and watching it sink down to 40 because I can do the DCA game because we are still riding up on the edges of the bull market. We know where it's going to end up, so it's not going to be that scary if we happen to not be able to pluck off the bottom of the correction, which is impossible to exactly determine. Now, this... MACD oscillators crossing over is an absolute confirmation of this dip on the stochastic. We are printing red bars on the histogram. This is probably going to cycle all the way down to zero. And that will let us know how low we will go. Now, let's look at one more chart and then we're done. One weak chart. Here it is. And it looks hideously obvious on the one week. Oh, man. I mean, I never would have guessed that we would have just broken the previous market cycle peak on this first run. Just a smooth run up here and boom, break it. But we did. But now it looks like it's correction time. <clears throat> when you look at the MACD oscillator, the blue line is starting to curl over. It looks like it wants to correct and cross over that yellow. We definitely have a stochastic bearish crossover. Will it hold? I don't know. But for right now, this says major bearish indication and correction. 
So as we are falling off of this peak here, it looks like we're falling off of a cliff. We can look to come down and maybe correct and bring down to this fib level, if I can even read it on here. Uh, is that the 236? I think it's the 236. It's hard to read. But at any rate, we can see the volume node sticking out right here at, say, 57, 56,000 is the bottom of this node, which coincides with the one on the last video or the last screen. And then we come down and we had that big node sticking out at 44. There they are. So I'm looking for a correction to drop us down somewhere in this range, okay? Where the rock bottom could be somewhere around 44,000. And then my bald face guess, which I don't know, is that we start to come out of here and head into the all out bull run. Now, I don't think we'll get a full cycle down on this stochastic correction. It's probably going to come to the 50 and then start to move back up because we only see the rock bottom happen uh, in the bear market. So after our double peak on the last um, market cycle top, we had a stochastic bottom. After that, one, two, three, four times. And then we started this bull run. This bull market cycle has started here. Let's make that green. Hello, green. And then uh, slight correction, continue up, and we should be running into the bull market peak, maybe December 2024, maybe first quarter 2025. If the cycles are shortening, it will be early, um, maybe December-ish. If the market cycle stays the same, it'll be first quarter 2025. So that is my analysis. And I still need to go back and get the person's name who gave me the last $5 super chat. And thank him or her. Thank you very much, by the way. If I don't find your name, I will find it. Um, but I do appreciate the support that I have been given on the channel. And I would also just absolutely love it if you would like, comment, and subscribe to the Crypto Pro channel. And if you would like to be like one of the fabulous people that are helping out with the donations, you can do so and help me defray the cost of producing the channel. I definitely need that. Uh, folks, if you're a VV enthusiast, I do have a VV update coming soon. Stay tuned for that. And otherwise, that is all we have for just this video. I did want to, um, keep you informed here so we know what to expect with Bitcoin and having a potential buying opportunity on these alts. That's all I've got for now. This is Carlton and I am out.